Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your love towards us. We thank you, Lord, for being with each one of us and members of families. Thank you for guiding us again before you this evening. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you be with us and you bless us with your truth. Guide us by your spirit, O oh Lord, be with every member of our household and be with people that will watch the program later on. We pray, dear Lord, that you use this program to bless everyone to the glory and honor of your name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. 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 Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. I hope um, I hope my system we I hope it will work well uh, so that you can hear me as clearly as possible. Uh, Brad Joseph, uh, request for leave of absence uh, just uh, about a few hours ago that he had uh, an urgent reason to be at work uh, this evening. So that's why he won't be, you won't be in the program to tonight and uh, he won't continue in what he's been uh, leading out. So what what I think we should do is simply, uh, I, I prefer that we should look at God's word a little, uh, just look at this uh, long passage of the Bible. We are, not, we are surely not going to be able to read every part of it. Uh, whatever number of verses we are able to look at, uh, we look at them and possibly if we have the opportunity less than the next 40, 45 minutes, then because a few of our members have been having one question or the other, then we see if we can uh, cover those questions. Uh, those those issues. Um, so the passage that I think we should we should see how much of it we can we can, we can just look at is uh, <clears throat> is the Psalm the the longest uh, chapter in the in the Bible that's Psalm 119. I want to I want to open to it. I, I want to open to Psalm 119 so that we consider a few things uh, in this uh, in this particular uh, psalm. Please, I want to know. I hope you can see my screen, please. We we can see your screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, can you see my screen? Yes, we, we can see your screen. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, go on, Sister Yelly. No, you are asking if you can see your screen, and I said yes. We Please, can. I hope you are not having problem with my audio. The audio is fine. Yeah. Can Can you hear me clearly, please? We can hear you clearly. You can hear me. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank God. Thank God. Um. So please, my prayer is that you'll be able to hear me because. Uh, um, communication in this uh, place has not been particularly a uh, sound in the, uh, for some time now, but uh, I, I hope, as I said, I hope we'll be able to we'll be able to hear me. Uh, Psalm 119 is uh, is one of the psalms, so to speak, of the Christian life, even though it is in the Old Testament. Uh, generally speaking, Christians should go to Samora 19 as often as possible because you, 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 you see the psalmist talking about the majesty of the law of God, his love for the law of God, the yearning of, the, of his spirit to God's law. That is what you see almost from 
verse one to the end of verse uh, to the to the end of this uh, book of Psalm, Psalm one and nineteen. The majesty of God's law, uh, the goodness that we have in the law of the Lord. So let me see if I can run through a few of the passages, as I said, maybe for the next uh, one hour, 40 minutes or whatever. First one, you can, as you can see, blessed that the undefiled in the way. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Who walk in the law of the Lord. We should not have, we should not want to have here this first this first one. Somewhere in the New Testament, Paul, God led Paul to write that we, the believers in Christ, that we are the Israel of God. That the believers in Christ are the they are, we are the new Israel of God. We are the we are the one that are undefiled in the way. And Samara 19 starts by calling blessing by talking of God's blessing on the people that are undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the lord we are the one that walk in god's law right from uh, from the inside from our heart that is part of the reason why i said psalm 119 is more or less like the new testament writing even though it is in the old testament the the undefiled in the way are the ones that the Lord Jesus Christ has made undefiled. The people that are undefiled are not people who never sin. They are the people whose sins have been taken away by the Savior. And the, the, the Psalm 119 starts by talking of blessing. It's not about blessing. Somewhere, I think, uh, I think in the book of Ephesians, if I'm not mistaken, in the Ephesians of Philippians, in chapter 3, the very first verse, the very first verse, the, this uh, last week I was reading, let, let me see if I can just open to the place. Uh, <clears throat> no, I think it has to be Ephesians, if I'm not mistaken. No. Okay, let me, what, what you have in the passage is that the apostle was talking to the Christians and twice in one fast, twice in one fast, he called them the beloved. Twice in, once in, in the first fast. As far as God is concerned, we are the beloved. We are the beloved. We are the one that walk. We are the one that walk with undefiled in the way. Whom, according to the Bible, are the blessed. They are the blessed ones that walk undefiled in the way. Let me go back to Psalm 119. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. The next, the next verse again, the second thing is, is the blessing. It's important that we as Christians and whoever is whoever watches sees this video to know the way the Bible is, is talking about blessing, blessing and blessing on those that love the Lord, on those that keep his testimonies, on those that seek him with the whole heart. In the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, God through Jeremiah wrote 
that you will seek for me, you search for me, and you will find me. When you search for me with, with all of your heart, blessed are they that keep his testimony and that seek him with the whole heart. These are, these are words of comfort. Even though they are from the Old Testament, they are words of comfort to those that follow Christ. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. We do no iniquity because we are found in Christ. Not, be, not, not because we are good in, in, in ourselves in any way. And not because we actually trust in our physical ability, in the, in the ability of our flesh. But we keep all our hope, all our faith, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou has commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. The only people that keep the precepts of God diligently are the followers of Christ. That's what you have in the book of Romans. The Lord saved Christians from the law. But he gives us the power to keep the law because we are keeping the law by his power. We are the ones that keep the law. In Romans chapter 6, you, 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 you see this question. Shall we continue in sin that grace may, may abound? No, he said no. Christians don't continue in sin because, so that in any way, because God is the one that actually gives us the heart to wish to do his will. And he does not only give us the heart to wish to do his will, he actually gives us the, the power to do it. So we, we, have, we have double blessing. The heart to do God's will is giving to Christians. That's the heart, the initial intention. The power to do it is given to us. So everything, everything in the Christian life is, is to the glory of God. The willingness to do God's will is, is the grace that is given to Christians. That's the willingness to start with. Then it is now followed by the ability to do it. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. The only people that keep the, the, the precepts of God diligently are, are those that follow Christ. All that my ways were directed to keep thy statue, then shall, shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have, when I shall have learned thy right, righteous judgments. I will keep thy status. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Well, first nine is uh, what many people are familiar with. Why, where with that shall a young man cleanse his way? Uh, how? How does a young, even how does the old man cleanse his way? Is, is the answer is the same by taking heed according to thy word. As I said, Psalm 119 is the psalm that glorifies the word of God, the law of God, the mind of God. With my whole heart, if I saw thee, oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. This phrase that you see in yellow here has been standard throughout all generations. The people that meet God, the people God actually looks at are those that seek him with the whole heart. Those that seek God for, him, for his own sake. Those that seek God for his own sake. Uh, Job in his time said that though he slays me, 
Though he slay me, I will, I will still run after him. Your loving kindness is better than life, is what you have in another passage of the Bible. God's loving kindness, God's loving kindness is better even than, than life. I want to remind the, every one of us that, that that particular passage was written in the Old Testament. It was, it was a prophet of the Old Testament that wrote, Thy loving kindness is better, is better than life itself. So to be, to be in the good book of God, so to speak, is better than the whole earth combined, than anything that you can see. That what have I hid in my heart that I might, that, that I might not sin against thee? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We have to hide God's word in our hearts. Hiding God's word in our heart means that we take God's word to be a very important issue. That's what it means. Blessed thou, O Lord, teach me thy statue. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimony as much as in all riches. This is a very, very important testimony for every Christian. And it is one of those ways for us to know whether we are Christians or not. The psalm is in verse 14. Psalm 119, verse 14. said that he had rejoiced in, in God's testimonies as much as in all riches. And this was a very rich person. God's testimonies they are far better than any wealth, even than any health that anybody can get, than any position. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statue. This was the psalmist speaking about his love, his delight for God's statue. His intention not to forget the, the word of God. I will not forget thy word. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live, that I may live and keep thy word. The issue always throughout, throughout this, this uh, psalm is about God's word, thy word, thy word, thy statutes, thy law, thy judgments. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. The wondrous things are actually in God's words. Not in anybody's, any human being's experience. No matter how fantastic the experience could be. Not in anybody's dreams. But in the word of God in the law of God. I'm a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. This is a very important prayer that the Lord, by his mercy, will open our heart. We will know God's commandments. And we will always remember that we are strangers. We are passerby. We are passersby. To us as human beings, 50 years, 60 years, 80 years, they are, they are quite long. But for a few of us who have been privileged to live beyond 50, beyond 60, there's nothing big in it. I generally tell people, I remember the last time I walked out of my primary school in 1971. It's just like yesterday. And for people who have lived a little longer, 
uh, some of them, they tell us the stories of what they did in 1960, where they were in 1958. As far as they are concerned, it's just like yesterday. It's important that for every one of us to remember we are strangers, we are passers by. Before you know it, our own time is gone. No matter how old we, we actually live. My soul breaks for the for the longing that it had unto thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that of course we do err from thy commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Princes also sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy status. No matter who is speaking against us, the word of God, the statue of God, are the main things we should take more importance. And will you take that more important than even our expectation to have any, any experience? God's word must be obeyed. Whether you have a cloud or you have a, you have a, a very, very fine sky. Princes also did sit and speak against what thy servant did meditate in thy status. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. This was somebody in the Old Testament writing this. Thy testimonies are also are my delight and my counselors. It must be the testimonies of God. It must not even be the suppositions in, of our own hearts. It must never be our dreams. It must never be the experiences of any human being. They must be the testimonies of God. My soul cleaves unto the doors, quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou hearest me. Teach me thy status. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul meets for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Blessed are the poor in, in, the, in spirit. That is what Christ said. Blessed are those that mourn, that heat for righteousness. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. I've chosen the way of truth, thy judgments have I laid before me. I've struck, I've stuck unto thy testimony, O Lord. Put me not to shame, it doesn't do it. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. These are the kind of prayers that God always, if you pray these prayers with the whole heart, God always hears the prayer of every human being that calls unto him through the Lord Jesus Christ with the whole heart. Because that is actually his nature. That is actually his nature. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy status. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy status. The the, the, the the promise that we have in the, in the New Testament is that the Spirit of God is given to Christians to guide us the way of God's status. That is, that is what we have in the book of John. That is what we have in the New Testament. That is God's promise to people of this testament of the new testament that he god said that he's going to write his laws on our hearts he's going to put his status in our mind and we will actually do his will 
right from inside of us. We will actually love to do his will. Teach me, O oh Lord, that the way of thy status, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding. Pray for understanding is an important prayer. According to the book of uh, James, chapter 1, verse 5, we say that if any of you lacks understanding, you should pray to God who gives liberally. Asking for prayer, asking for understanding, praying for prayer rather, is for understanding. Pray, pray, pray for understanding before God. It's one prayer, according to God in the book of James chapter 1, verse 5, verse 6, that God always answers the prayer. And this is perhaps one of the most important prayers we should be praying for. Christians should stop deceiving themselves, praying about material things, about money, about wealth, about position. It is understanding of the, of the mind, the will of God, the law of God. With the love to do God's will. That, is actually, that, should, that should be our best prayer. That should be our, our most important prayer. Give me understanding and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. May me to go in the path of thy commandment, for therein do I, do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. Again, as I said, we should note this, what we are reading here, they are in the Old Testament, they are in the New Testament. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have long after thy precepts, quicken me in thy righteousness. We should, we should long after, God's, after the precepts of God. One big blessing that comes with reading Psalm 119, is that if you read any part of it and you discover one way or the other, your heart is, is deficient in what the writer is, is writing about. You are actually drawn to pray for yourself, to pray for God's mercy, that he will put the love for God's law you will put them, you will put it in your heart. Let thy masses come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer in thy reproaches me, for I trust in thy love. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy, in thy judgments. So shall I keep thy love continually, forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. I will delight myself in thy commandments which I have loved. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. These are the yearnings of Christians. Of course, some of the what you are reading actually belong directly to the Savior. But a good much of what you have in Psalm 119 are actually the yearning, the yearning of the saved. Remember thy word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. That's verse, verse 49. Psalm 119, verse 49. God has caused us to hope in his word. Our hope is in God's word. 
it is important for us to remember that God, God does not disappoint those that actually seek him. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Those that actually seek him, God does not disappoint them. If he is the one, if he is the object of your search, if he is the object of your faith, this is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. You can see again, he's talking about the majesty, the glory of God's word. This is my comfort in, for thy word hath quickened me. The proud have had me greatly in, the, in their reason, yet have I not declined from thy law. I remember thy judgments of food, O Lord, and have comforted myself. He remember God's judgments of food. The fact that God, even from even from ancient times, had always kept his words. He had always kept his words. According to his will, to his own glory. And he will continue to do so. Job, in his time, said that, that I know my Redeemer liveth. This was somebody who was skeleton. But it, it didn't really matter. It didn't matter to, to Job. I know my Redeemer liveth. And that he shall stand on the earth in the last day. And with my eye I shall see him. Even, even if this flesh, even if this flesh disappears. I remember, I remember that judgments of old, oh Lord, I have comforted myself. The people who were followers of God in the generations, they, they, they comforted themselves because they remember God's judgments. Because they remember he always judged right. Even if the judgment that God made was that some of his children will be martyred, it's always for their, for their goodness. Horror are taking hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I've remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night. I've, I've kept thy law. This I had because I kept thy precepts. Thou art my portion. That says, verse that's 57. Thou art my portion, O Lord. I've said that I will keep thy works. Thou art my portion. God must be our portion. He must be our portion. I entreat, I entreat thy faithful with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy status. The earth is full of God's mercy. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, but I have believed thy commandments. God actually teaches his children good judgment and knowledge. He teaches his children good knowledge and, and knowledge. Everyone that comes to him, that's what Christ said, those that come to me, I shall by no means 
send out. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good, teach me thy status. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I keep thy precepts in my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy love. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy status. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Yes, I, I actually underline this place because some few years ago I was listening to Creflo Dollar and he was saying the law of the mouth. When he was saying it, he was pointing to his own mouth. The law of the mouth is better, better than thousands of gold and silver. Ah, the law of the mouth is, is what will happen in the Bible, the law of the mouth. The man was saying, it, the law of the mouth. So what, according to Creflo Dollar, what that meant was that you, you, you just say it. Because it was the law of the mouth that is better than thousands of gold and silver. As I listened to the man, the law of the mouth, is that what you have in, in Psalm 119, verse 72? No. It, it, it is the law of God's mouth. It is the law of thy mouth. The law of thy mouth that is better than thousands of gold and silver. But just like every other place where these people rest the Bible, the scripture, as, as Peter put it, where they actually rest the, the, the scripture to their own destruction, you should not be surprised that you are going to hear many of these, of these things from these people. Where they simply change one letter only. The man only change Y. He remove Y and put E there. Creflo Dollar only remove Y and put E. The law of the mouth. And that was that was why he, that was what he was saying. And that again will tell you that. These people have got no fear, no fear about the word of God. By simply removing Y and putting E, the law of thy mouth became the law of the mouth. I said, yes, yes, you can see it, it was the law of the mouth. Every one of these people, they do such things. A few, I think a few months ago, I listened again to Mr. David Oedepo. And he himself, he also took the liberty to blatantly change God's word in the book of John. He also just took it on himself to change God's word. The fa I live by the Father. Since I live by the Father, whoever is in me will live by me. He changed by to us. It was no longer I live by the Father. It was now, I live as the Father, and you yourself you can live as me. And David Oedepo was uh, blatant enough to say, that's actually what is supposed to be there. It is not, it is not by, it is as. You can remove by. I live by the Father. Those who have eaten me will live by me, that Christ said. 
I think in the book of um, John chapter 6, he removed by and he put us, that you can substitute us. You can live as me. That Christ actually taught that you, as a human being, you can live as Christ. Not that you live by Christ. These are people who actually have no fear for God. They have no fear for his law. And they think that they can change God's law. This, the writer of Psalm 119 is filled with awe about his dread, his fear about God's law. And everything is about the majesty of God, the glory of God. That is actually the issue. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me, give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. This was a prayer. This is a prayer of the psalmist. This must also be the prayer of each one of us. That we continue to pray every day, basically, to pray for understanding from the Lord Jesus Christ. So that we might understand, so that we might know, and so that we might do the will of God. They that have feared thee will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. Let, I pray thee, thy merciful, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort, according to thy word of thy servant. Let thy, let thy tender mercies come unto me, that I may live, for thy law is my delight. Those that love, that follow the Lord Jesus Christ, God's law, God's law is our delight. Let the proud be ashamed, for they, for they died perfectly with me without a cause, but I meditate in thy precepts. Let those that fear thee turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimonies. Let my heart be sound in thy statue, that I be not ashamed. My soul fails for thy salvation, but I hope, I hope in thy word. My eyes fail for thy word, saying, when will thou come, when will thou comfort me? For I become like a bottle in the, in the smoke. Yet do I not forget thy statutes. How many are the days of thy servants? When will thou execute judgment on them that persecute me? The proud have deep peace for me, which are not after thy law. All thy commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrong, wrongfully. Help thou me. They had almost consumed me upon earth, but I forsook not thy precepts. Quicken me after thy loving kindness. So shall I like give the testimony of thy mouth. Quicken me after thy loving kindness. So shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. Before I move forward from verse 88, but by now, when you look at the recurrence of the prayer of these psalmists to God's words, God's testimonies, God's law, you must be wondering, didn't this person have any material need? Why, why was he not praying for, 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 for good harvest, for example? Why was he not praying for promotion? Why, why was he not praying for cars or for houses? Why was he not praying for spouses? Why? Why is it that 
it is it is the word of God and the keeping of God's word that that actually is the main issue that recurs often and often in all of this and 119. Quicken me after that loving kindness, so shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. This is uh, verse 89, is one of those verses that we must always remember. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. God's word is settled in heaven. It's not in flux. The, the opposite of something being settled is to be in flux, to be changing. A lot of people teach today that God's word change. The word of God changes to one person, to one generation, to one people, and the rest of it. No. Psalm 119 verse 89 is there, black and white, Thy word is settled in heaven. God's word is settled in heaven. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word, thy word is settled in heaven. And God's faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast, thou hast established the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to thy ordinances. For all are thy servants. Everything. What you see, what you do not see, they are all servants of God. The whole of the created universe. They all serve him. They are all for his glory. Unless thy law had been my delight, I should then have perished in my affliction. I will never forget that precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. Yeah. With God's precepts, we are quickened. When we read God's words, we are quickened by, his, by his, his precepts. I am thine, save me, for I have sought thy precepts. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies. I have seen an end of all perfection. But thy commandment is succeeding broad. God's commandment is exceeding broad. Oh how, oh how love I thy law. It is my meditation. It's all about the psalmist's love of God's law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies. When we put our mind in the commandments of God, God made, makes us wiser than our enemy. I have more understanding that all my teachers for their testimonies and my meditation. When we put our mind on God's testimonies, He gives us more understanding than every other person. Because the understanding we have is the understanding from heaven. Look at verse 100. I think this is where we are going to stop. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. The law of God gives us more understanding even that the, than the aged than old people who do not know God. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. God gives understanding to those that keep his precepts. He gives them understanding no matter their age. As teenagers, they know more about the world, about the mind of God, than 90-something-year-old person who has never met the Lord Jesus Christ. This is 
this is God's promise. And just as we have read in passages upon passages, God keeps his words. He keeps his words. He gives his people more understanding than even their parents because they set their hearts at seeking him and at living for him. Because I keep my precept, I understand more than the ancients. I have more understanding than all my teachers for their testimonies and my meditation. Thou, through thy commandments, has made me wiser than my enemies. Through, through God's commandments. Thank you, everybody, for, for your short time, for your attention.